Hey guys, welcome to a video today. We're gonna to be talking about Enneagram Type 2. We're talking about the subtypes. Exciting stuff, great information. I know this video is gonna take a while, but it's gonna to be totally worth it. Um, when we talk about the subtypes, we're talking about the self-preservation type, the social type, and the sexual type. And uh, we're gonna do our best to try to get all this information in one video and try to make it as simple as we can. Um, and I'm doing a lot of research, got a lot of information to cover. and. Um, I'm not saying I understand this completely. By the way, I got my Enneagram 7 shirt on. I'm a 7. It's awesome. Um, and it is awesome. Every one of these is awesome. Every type is awesome when they're healthy. So let's talk about the two. Let's talk about, let's start with the uh, self-preservation two. I'm going to try to give you some characters as best I can. I'll tell you what, it was hard coming up with characters for the self-preservation two and the sexual two. Um, the social too, I know pretty well. My wife is a social too, and uh, I've seen a lot of uh, characters in TV, and you know that that remind me of of my wife's patterns. So we're gonna do our best to try to to cover all this information. We're gonna start with the self preservation too. This is sometimes called the privileged too. Doesn't that sound terrible? <laughs> Even starting off, I know, people get upset because they say the Enneagram is so harsh, but it is, it just it just is. I mean, if you wanna look for some kind of personality profile that makes you feel awesome about yourself, it's not the Enneagram. Uh, you'll see a lot of good about yourself, but the Enneagram primarily points out where our weaknesses, you know, our troubled areas, our, our potential problem areas. And all twos are great, okay? So don't don't misunderstand anything I'm about to say. Twos are great people. They love with the heart. They are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, they are there for you when, when you have a need. And uh, we take them for granted. We do it all the time. We take them for granted. We just assume that, oh, well, they're going to show up and they're going to be there for me. So we take that for granted and we start to just, you know, expect that. And then sometimes we don't reciprocate that. And twos can get kind of sad or upset or hurt when they don't feel like, you know, we're responding back to, to all the love and care that, that they've shown us. So let's talk about the, so, the self-preservation too, uh, called the, the privileged or the entitled uh, two. This is the counter two, okay? This is the two that goes against the, uh, the pattern of two-ness. Um, and doesn't necessarily operate exactly the same way the, uh, the other twos do. Uh, so the other twos, you know, they have this sense of, look at all I do for you. Look at all I, I give to you. Look at all the help that I am to you. The counter two, the self-preservation two, you know, is also, you might call the cute two, the cuteness two. It's more like, I don't really have to do all these things for you because I'm cute. <laughs> I'm cute. I'm childlike. You know, so the self-preservation too might look younger than they actually are, you know, because their whole personality, you know, their subtype is based on I'm cute and I'm childlike. And so you don't really expect me to take care of you. You need to take care of me. Um, not that they don't take care of people, but it, their, their natural inclination is to run counter to that two um, impulse to take care of everybody. So if you're a two and you read all these things about twos caring for everybody and you go, yeah, that's that's true, but uh, this might help you understand yourself a little bit better, okay? So um, the, the counter two, the self-preservation two, wants others to protect, wants others to take care of them. It's like, um, look at all that I've done for you. Look at all that I you know, all I've been there for you and look at how, you know, well I treat you and look at how lovely I am and how loving I am. And therefore I'm entitled to your care, your concern, and you're taking care of me. There it's called the entitled to, or I would say maybe the adorable to, okay? The adorable to. This is uh, a childlike to. Um, the cute uh, boy or the cute girl. Uh, the two that maybe doesn't look like a two, that sometimes can look like a six and sometimes can look like a four. Why does it look like a six? Well, this two wants support from people. Like sixes build alliances and coalitions to build support. This two wants support um, from people by giving them sincere, there's a key word, sincere, it's not fake, sincere expressions of friendliness and helpfulness. So this two is friendly and helpful to build support among uh, people for themselves. Um, they're very charming. They're very sweet. Um, they can seduce, but it's, 
And twos are known to be seducers, okay? Primarily the sexual two. But this seducing is like the seduction of a child. Like the big eyes, you know, the big eyes that, that draw you in and make you say, oh, well, you know, um, I, I'm going to protect this person. I'm going to love this person. So those doe eyes, that sweetness or seduction of a child in the presence of adults uh, may look youthful and young. This too remains little, okay? This too remains little, evoking care from others. Can be fearful and mistrusting of others, like a six, okay? Fearful and mistrusting of others can be hesitant and more guarded than the other twos. Can be shy and adaptable, can relate to all kinds of people at all levels in the organization or all so social levels, can feel comfortable around you know people that are down and out or people that are in need. Um, they, they make a house a home. They can be very enthusiastic, playful, fun-loving, humble. Um, they don't need to steal credit for what they do. They sometimes can um, become distracted in, in their efforts and focus on social things instead of what they need to get done. They can sometimes you know, focus on parties and shopping and fun as a way of distracting themselves away from sad feelings. I think there's a lot of similarities sometimes between twos and sevens, and that what I just said is very seven, okay? Um, so distracting themselves away from sad and, and, and with, with fun and with social get-togethers and parties and dinners, um, uh, they may be more ambivalent about connecting with others than the other twos. They may not uh, be as impulse to connect with others. Again, the counter two, right? They may be more irresponsible if they feel incapable or overwhelmed. They could become more irresponsible. They may not take responsibility for their own emotions and their own reactions. Again, this is the childlike two, okay? We're gonna to get to the more adult-like two in a minute. This is the childlike two. So may not have may not always take responsibility. Responsibility is an adult-like behavior, okay? Emotional, but may try to guard that emotionalness at work. Uh, they can be very hypersensitive to criticism and to disapproval. Twos across the board can be very sensitive to criticism because the two's personality is designed to, to please you, is designed to, to be there for you. And if they're not found pleasing to you, then, you know, they're going to take that as a criticism. If you're not happy, you know, the, the, one of the driving statements of a two is, I'm happy if everybody around me is happy. If everybody around me is content, then I'm content. And if they're picking up the cues from people that those people that they love that are important people to them aren't content, and aren't happy, the two is going to struggle with that and take that personally. So hypersensitive to criticism and disapproval. Oversensitive can take things personally. Uh, capable and dependable, but may resist being the person in charge. And that's going to be true of, of all twos, you know, in a general sense. But I think the social two, we'll get to in a minute, is, is more likely to be willing to take charge. But this uh, self-preservation to might resist being the person in charge, not comfortable with being the person to ask or the person in authority. Again, that can be a, a very seven-like quality as well. So they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily want to be the person in charge. Now, I think part of that comes from, you know, when you put yourself out as the person in charge, then you, you put yourself up to be criticized, you know, so everybody's going to look at you and say, why are you doing it like that? Why are you doing it like this? This could be done better. This should be done faster. Why wasn't this done yesterday? And when you put yourself out there as the leader, you put yourself out as a target. And twos don't want to be a target. Okay, They want to be supportive. They want to be helpful. They want to be encouragers. They want to be behind the scenes. A lot of times they want to, uh, they, they, they want to be important, but they don't necessarily want to stand out on the battlefield on top of the horse with a big shoot me sign on their hat, okay? So uh, they may not necessarily, they may move away from those positions of authority, just like a seven. Um, again, from the research, this is the two that looks like a six or a four. I'm throwing in that I see some things that are similar to seven because I see it from, you know, through my own eyes. Uh, they don't necessarily want to uh, have the attention of the spotlight. So they might have mixed feelings about being, you know, the center of attention in, in a large way. They might want to be the center of your attention, okay? 
they might be on one-on-one, -on -one, they wanna be the center of your attention and they want the spotlight in the relationship, but they may not want the spotlight out there you know, in the group. Okay, more comfortable in a supportive role, wants the support of others and the feedback of others, but like all twos can have trouble taking that support in. When you try to give them that support and say, man, you did a great job. Wow, that was wonderful. What? They may be like, oh no, they might minimize that. Oh no, no, it was nothing. Oh no, no. You know, they might have a hard time taking in that approval and taking in those positive statements because twos, I think their pride can keep them from taking in those positive statements. More likely than other twos to express a need to be taken care of, all right? Because that's gonna run counter to, to the other twos, to the archetype two, you know, the archetype meaning the basic two. To be taken care of is not something that twos naturally, you know, wanna, want to, you know, realize about themselves. Everybody needs to be taken care of at times. All of us, you know, can get in over our heads or have burdens in life where we need some help. But the twos have a hard time being taken care of. This two is more willing to accept the fact that sometimes, yes, I do need to be taken care of. More okay with that. Often this can come about in indirect or maybe in hidden ways with other people or their important people in their life. It's kind of like, take care of me because I'm sweet. Take care of me because you want to. Take care of me because I'm lovable. Take care of me because I've taken care of you. And so they're more willing to express their need to be taken care of. Um, desire to be supported by others, needs help figuring out how uh, to do something. Um, more, more willing to express that they need help figuring out how to do something. Neglecting their own welfare. Everyone else gets a doctor's appointment, uh, but I'll take mine last. See, that's, that's just two stuff. Twos are all, all like that. I'll take the last seat at the table. I'll take the last doctor's appointment. Um, unconscious of hope. Someone else, okay, they're unconscious of this hope. This is interesting. Uh, that some, they hope that someone else will step in and provide the resources and support. So they might lean in and offer support and help, but kind of the unconscious hope that this two has is that they won't really actually have to go through with that. Somebody else will come in. Somebody else will take care of it. I want to be seen as offering support and, and help, but I'd really rather somebody else come in and offer support and help. Again, this is a counter to, okay? And if you don't feel this way, don't panic. Don't hit the panic button. Maybe you're one of the other twos. Or, or, and this is just one, this is just research, okay? So if you're saying, well, that's not true, none of these are gonna be 100% true of every person, okay? This is just after research and discussion and understanding and authors, and th this, is, this is, you know, what has been discovered as being uh, sometimes the case, okay? So if this doesn't describe you perfect, don't, don't have a panic attack. Um, I'm entitled to what I need because of how I've worn myself out for you. Okay, self-preservation too. Um, they want they 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 they're they're hoping somebody will come in and relieve them of the demands of giving. So they'll take the initiative to give and serve and help, but they're kind of unconsciously hoping somebody else will come in and help um, come alongside them and help relieve them of all these demands on their energy and all these demands on their on their on their service. Hesitant about taking an active role, okay? Leading projects or exerting power in a decisive way to get things done. Um, they can be hesitant to do that. Again, because um, when you ex exert power or when you lead, again, you put yourself up as a target. Want to be seen as a strong and indep independent and hardworking person, yet tentative and cautious about actually stepping up to the plate. So want to be seen as a strong and independent and hardworking person, yet when it comes right down to stepping up to the plate, putting your name down and signing up and being there, this too might back away. Again, it's you love me because of how great I am or how nice I am, how friendly I am, how charming I am, how loving I am, how supportive I am. You don't love me because of what I'm doing for you. This too might not be the two that stays behind and washes dishes, stays behind, cleans up, stays behind. It's more the two that's gonna tell you about all the connections they have and how rich those connections are and how important those people are and how important they are to people. It's more like that. Um, they don't want to displease or bring shame. Uh, want to be seen without showing themselves. They may be a little bit guarded. 
So they want to be seen and known, but they, you may not actually really get to know them very well because, again, if you find out what's behind the surface or beneath the surface, that might displease you. And so they might be a little bit self-protective, a little bit guarded. Don't want to, they don't want to have to try to prove their worth and value. They want you to just know their worth and value. They want to be valuable like a child. A child doesn't prove their worth and value. They just assume that you love them and are going to take care of them. Don't love me because of what I give you or do for you, but because of how sweet and cute and innocent and loving I am. Now, who are some characters that come to my mind? I tell you what, this was really hard. I don't know that I've nailed this at all. I really don't. I, I, this is just what comes to my mind, okay? I think of, this is old, but in the Beverly Hillbillies, I think of Ellie Mae Clampett, okay? She's beautiful. She's, she loves animals. She's innocent. She's naive. And what does she really do to serve people? I, I think she doesn't really serve. She, she doesn't really do a lot to help. You know, Jethro's out there trying, cutting firewood and, and all kinds of nonsense. Um, Ellie, you know, is just, what is she? She's just sweet. She's just attractive. She's just, she's just adorable. So what do you expect out of her? You don't expect anything out of her except for her to take care of her monkeys. You know, she takes care of her animals and, um, she just provides a warmth in the house. Uh, she just provides a support, you know, supporting role in the house. Uh, but she's not making dinner. No, Granny's making dinner. Granny's probably an eight in that show. Uh, Jed's probably a nine, and Jeff. This is, I've never thought about him before. Jed's probably a nine, and Jethro's probably a seven. You know, um, a seven wing eight, the realist. Only his reel is, you know, from our, from, I, I'm not going to say Arkansas on this video. <laughs> I'm going to say he's a hillbilly, okay? I'm not going to say everybody in Arkansas is a hillbilly because I've only been there once and what I saw was great. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I think of Ellie Mae Clampett, you know, as being a, a possible uh, Self-preservation too. I don't know that she is, but I think that's what these authors are getting at. That kind of persona, okay? Um, somebody suggested maybe Gloria on Modern Family. I think Gloria on Modern Family might be this, or she could possibly be the, the sexual too, the one-on-one -on -one too. I don't know. I'd have to really think about that, but I suggest it. And then there's a character that will make sense to only a few small group of you out there. There's a new Looney Tunes show where Bugs Bunny's girlfriend, Lola... She is this too. So I don't know if you have access to Boomerang or not, that channel, but that little girlfriend bunny of his, she is dead on this kind of too, okay? I think the the snapshot that I get of this kind of too is is that uh, young girl getting, doesn't have to be young, I guess, but that young girl getting pulled over by a police officer for speeding, you know, she's got the top down on the car. It's her daddy's car. She's got the top down on her car. You know, she's got her sunglasses on, makeup. She's attractive, you know, and she gets pulled over by a police officer. Police officers, you know, taking her driver's license and information. And she does the, uh, you're not going to give a ticket to little old me, are you? Little old me? You're going to give a ticket to little old me? Why, well, I... And I can talk you out of this predicament I'm in by just being cute and innocent and charming and little old me. You're going to give a ticket to little old me? Well, I never heard of the likes. <laughs> That's the kind of snapshot I get uh, for this too, okay? I don't know if it's accurate, but that's what comes to my mind. After researching and getting all this information, that's what I get. All right, let's move on to the social two. This two I know a lot more about, okay? This is the two I live with. So I've got a healthy respect, okay, for the social two. This one I understand a lot better. This is the social two that is the adult-like two, okay? The, the self-preservation is the childlike. This is the adult-like two. More introverted. And if that one is adorable, this one could be called ambitious, all right? The ambitious two. This one's a little more comfortable with those leadership roles. This one's a little more comfortable with taking charge, taking responsibility, being an adult, organizing things, getting things done. Let's meet needs. Let's all work together. They, 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 might, they might even shout a little bit about everybody getting along with each other and creating a happy, loving home, okay? This two uh, looks more like a three or more like an eight, okay? And I think in some ways can look a little bit more like a one and also has a little bit of that seven in them as well. Okay, so let's 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 go through this and talk about, unpack this a little bit. So this one's more of the leader type too, or 
This one's called the power to. There you go. How about that? How about that, honey? You're the power to. I said that to my wife. The power to. I already knew that. You're the influential person, okay? This two is comfortable being an influential person. Now, if you're a two, you're probably saying, well, no, I'm not. I, 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 no, I'm not. But this two is more willing to be an entrepreneur. This two is more willing to step out there. And, you know, it's like it's kind of like this. Like, this world out there is a very you know, hard place. And there's people out there that are hurting. And if I have to step up and take care of them and put my name out there, then that's what I'm going to do because somebody's got to care about these people. Somebody's got to get out there and make a difference. This two might look a little bit more proud than the other twos. Okay. You know, that pride thing of twos, again, twos don't realize that about themselves. When they learn about the Enneagram and, and they realize that their sin is pride, they kind of look at you like, no, 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 no. And even people around them will say, are you kidding me? This person, they get their hands dirty. They're willing to do whatever it takes. How could pride be their sin? But this too could look a little bit more confident, a little bit more, you know, in charge, a little bit more secure, okay, in, in their work. So they're okay with being in charge or taking charge. If, if, and you, again, you might be too saying, that's, I don't know about that. I don't know. Okay. Let's say it's time for breakfast. Let's say it's time, you know, to, the kids all have to get ready. Uh, we're going somewhere. It's time for breakfast and, breakfast and everybody's just doing their own thing and nobody's nobody's getting ready. This too is going to start, hey, come on guys, get your shoes on, get your teeth brushed, get your pants changed, get your shower. Let's, you make the, you set the table, you, and you'll see this too, who's providing care and support for everybody, orchestrate this event and pull it off by moving people in the directions that they need to be moved in. That's leadership, okay? That's leadership. So this two might be a little bit more willing to be in charge. Again, looks like an eight, okay? This two can look a little bit more like an eight than, than the other twos. I, than the little old me, little old me, I'm not an eight. Okay, this two can look a little bit more like an eight than, than, than that one can. <laughs> okay, um, this is the more, more intellectual of the twos, okay? Again, the more adult-like, the more intellectual, the more I know some information that can help change your life and I'm here because I care about you, I'm here because I wanna help you and I'm going to teach you now. And think about this, the one wing two is a teacher. That's the advocate, right? And this, this two is right there next to that one wing two. So it's got a lot of that teacher, uh, uh, you know, order in the classroom kind of mentality in it. This, uh, this too can be a small business owner, executive, entrepreneur. Uh, the public image that they demonstrate is one of strength, okay? They're ambitious. They, they are okay being influencers. They might, they might like that word influencer better than leader. This too might say, well, I don't really see myself as a leader. Influencer, yeah, I could see that. Influencer, I influence people. Um, this too would like to be seen as somebody who's competent, somebody who is let's say super incompetent or super incompetent, super competent. Okay. Somebody who knows what they're doing is there for the right reasons and can make people's lives better and capable. They want to be seen as capable. Uh, they'll take on a task and they'll succeed. They believe in themselves. They can accomplish their goals. They do things the way, this is important, the way they should be done. They've got that two, that one energy right next to them, right? So, they do things the way they should be done. So in that regard, they might, you know, look a little bit like a one at times, but that's their wing, you know. I mean, twos all have that one as their wing, whether they're dominant that way or not, okay. Um, they These twos, the social two would be supportive of the right people. They're very goal-oriented, can be, and support supportive of people to accomplish goals. They can be strategic thinkers who make things happen through the avenue of relationships. Remember to a two, everything's about relationships. All twos, everything is seen through the eyes of relationships. And so since this two is a little bit more driven and goal-oriented and can look like a three, remember, look like a three, look like an eight. Since this, one, this two is a little bit more goal-oriented, they're going to use what comes natural to them, which is relationships, to try to move the agenda forward. So they're going to connect with the right people, network effectively, support people, and then rely on that support and rely on those relationships for the goal of moving 
progress forward, okay? So they like give and take relationships. They're strategic thinkers. They gain alliances. They orchestrate through groups. Now that, all of this could have a dark side if, you know, if, if it was done in a negative way, but I'm, I'm assuming everything's done in a positive way. They often work behind the scenes strategically uh, to, to work, you know, through the group and in the group uh, strategically, willing to work hard. They are super productive uh, and they're willing at times to tell others what needs to be done. They can be decisive, visionary, committed to the organization, committed to the family, committed to people, can win over a crowd, will work diligently, impressive, exceptional, knowledgeable. Whew. Wow, what a list. These people are willing to get their hands dirty. These people are willing to get out there and, and support others who support them in a reciprocal relationship. They can often appear warm on the outside, uh, but can still be focused on their individual success using those relationships to move the agenda forward. They may appear vulnerable on the outside. Okay, they can act in bold ways and do ambitious things by mixing a clear reading of what's needed in the situation with a deep understanding of the people involved because they're connected. They're connected to the people involved. So let's move the agenda forward and, and they know the people that they're gonna be working with, okay? And who would be in those best positions. They can be passionate and sometimes stand above the rest. There's that maybe pride thing, right? If they know that about themselves or they don't know that about themselves, they may come across like they're standing above the rest when maybe they're not intending to. So they can have a little bit of an air of superiority because they're doing the right things for the right reasons. In their mind, they're doing the right things for the right reasons to help others and why aren't you? You should be too. Why aren't you doing these kinds of things? So they can come across maybe sometimes with a little bit of superiority or they are come, come across like a little bit exceptional. Um, the unconscious thinking of the social two is people should wanna be more like me. Remember the unconscious thinking of the, of the self-preservation two? Let me get it right. It was, um, um, do you wanna help me? You wanna take care of me. You wanna take care of me and, and others uh, hopefully will show up to do to do that. With the social two, the unconscious thinking is, is don't you want to be more like me? Don't you want to, to be helpful like me? Um, let's see. People probably envy me because of my usefulness and my helpfulness and my skills and my knowledge and my, and, and my um, servant heart. Afraid of being left out and overlooked. This too is afraid of being left out and overlooked. Gaining admiration and respect through one's knowledge and abilities. There's a key statement. Gaining admiration and respect, which are important to this too, through one's knowledge and abilities. Okay, so this one's also called everybody's friend. They probably feel like everybody's servant, but they're called everybody's friend. Now, who are some examples? I, th I think I got a lot of good ones, okay? Um, I, I think about... Deborah from Everybody Loves Raymond, Raymond's wife, I think is a social two. Okay. Um, Ann Perkins from Parks and Recreation is a very adult two. Andy, you know, doesn't want to take responsibility for himself. And, uh, you know, he wants somebody to wait on him and take care of him. And she does until finally she has enough of it. Right. Um, I think possibly Alice from the Brady Bunch, she might be this too. Um, I'm not 100% on that, but she could very well be this too. Daphne Moon on Frasier, you know, the dad, the grandpa's caregiver. She's very helpful, very supportive. And then, you know, she can sometimes go to eight as, you know, all twos can. I think Mary Ann on Gilligan's Island might be this kind of two. Uh, her character might be this kind of two. I could see a little bit of maybe the self-preservation too in Marianne because she is, I'm young, I'm cute, but she's also tries to be very helpful to people. She also tries to, you know, to deliver, you know, and be supportive and helpful and whatever she's got to do to take care of people. So I can see Marianne, I can see you making a case for Marianne being this kind of too. And I think probably one of the best examples, if you're into Harry Potter, is Mrs. Weasley, right? Molly Weasley, Ron Weasley's mom. I think she's very much this social too. 
you know, if you go back and watch that movie or that series of movies, you know, she's busy, 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 getting stuff done, taking care of responsibilities, and it's all out of love. It's all to help and be supportive. And you remember when Ron gets that letter from his mom at the school, that screamer? I forget what they call it. It's something like a screamer where he, he stole the car and broke the car, and he gets that letter, opens it up, and it's his mom screaming at him. He's going to eight, right? Twos go to eight. Okay, so that's the, the social two. Let's talk about the one-on-one -on -one two, okay, or the sex, sexual two. This two can look like a three or can sometimes look like a four. And if the first one is called the adorable two and the second one is called the ambitious two, this two might be called the aggressive two or the seductive two. Um, and this aggressive kind of has the idea of like, the two that might consume you, okay? So let's see if we can get into this a little bit. The self-preservation is, I'm cute, I'm childlike, I'm the cuteness, oh, little old me? You wouldn't write a ticket to little old me. And then the, uh, the social two is the adult-like two. This two is kind of like the girlfriend two, okay? Or the mistress two, the girlfriend two, the seductive two, all right? So the first one's the cute boy, the second one is, is your mom, and this one is the cute girlfriend, okay? The girlfriend, too. Um, so this one wants others' passionate attachment. This one wants you to be attached to them. They want to be what your focus of your attention is. They, they focus on being appealing to others, to seduce others, to get their needs met, okay? And all twos work strategically to get their own needs met. That's a whole other video, right? But this too seduces others to get their own needs met and can use their relationship and their charm and their sexuality as a way to draw others in. Okay, so they present themselves in an attractive way. Wow, that sounds like a three, doesn't it? So this is a two that can look like a three. They create mutually supportive relationships, usually one at a time, and present themselves in a way that others want to be attracted to them. Most of the time, twos, they focus the spotlight of the attention on you, right? But this too can sometimes bring that spotlight of attention back on themselves. Um, let's see. They want others to be connected to them. They present themselves as an attractive presentation. Um, they, are, they will express their feelings. They can be highly emotional. They can express their emotions forcefully. They can take the lead and have fun, especially in social events. They can lobby for others. They can be very supportive of others. Naturally, emotionally, and vibrant people. They seduce others with their charm and sometimes their sexuality to lure potential suppliers in who will supply them with love, favors, and gifts. Wow, okay. A lot of energy, a sense of fun and excitement, um, uh, enjoyment of personal interactions, charming and oppressive, impressive, generous with their attention. And it's kind of like the idea with this too is I don't have to tell you what I need because we're so bonded that you know what I need. <laughs> Which we don't always at times. We can't read each other's minds. That's the thing is we're not good at reading each other's minds. But they, this too can really read people and read what people need, okay? And they know what's going to win those people over. So they're very charming and play to those strengths of winning people over, which all twos kind of operate, and probably this one more than any of them, all twos kind of operate with that sense of there's two kinds of people in the world, those that love me and those that don't know me well enough yet. <laughs> I think all twos kind of operate from that. All right. This person becomes what people like to win them over and build rapport, rapport and allegiance. If others don't respond, this too can become very angry. If, this, if others don't respond well and appropriately, you know, and don't want that connection, this too can become frustrated and upset and angry. They will align with key people, people that they respect, people that they like. They can prioritize their relationships and fo focus more attention on the people that matter the most to them or the people that can be the most strategic or the relationships that can be the most advantageous. Um, bring passion and emotional intensity into everything they do. That sounds very four-ish. Okay, can sound a little seven-ish too. Charm specific people so that they will be able to count on them when they need them. They can make big things happen. They can get carried away and get excited about a plan or an idea. 
Again, a little bit like a seven. So I think seven, I see seven in all of these. That's just my perspective though. It's the ground I stand on. I can't help but where I stand, okay? Um, so if you're a two and you feel a little 70 at times, I, I would agree with you, okay? I would say I see that a lot. Okay, um, can make big things happen, get care motivated by their deep caring for others. That's good, that's a good thing. An energetic commitment to working for others. Good, we applaud you, that's great. So I think this, this two, like all twos, but this one primarily would probably say, love motivates everything I do, love. And there's that seducing, right? There's that romantic, romanticizing, that, that, that Cupid, you know, love is what drives me, love. And that's what they want from you. They want to give you that and they want that from you. They, this, this person wants to occupy a special place in your life. I think all twos do, but this one primarily wants to be that special friend. Remember the, the second one, the social was everybody's friend. Okay, everybody's support, everybody's. This one I think is a little bit more specific to you. The sexual two is relating one-on-one. -on -one. I wanna be your center of your world, the center of your sphere, okay? They wanna occupy that special place in your life. A need to be desired, a need to be desired leads to a need to seduce, okay? So if you're, if you're with one of these kinds of twos, it might be helpful for you to help in any way you can let them know that you desire them, that they are pleasing and desirable to you. Any way you can communicate that is going to strengthen this person's um, connection. So they're going to inspire attraction from others. So people will give them what they want. People will want to meet my needs because I'm so attractive and desirable. That's the... Uh, the unconscious thought. People will want to meet my needs because I'm so attractive and desirable. Now, who's the character for this? Let me say a couple more things. Creating an attractive image and adapting to people in order to win over specific people. Seduce others to get their own needs met and they want a blank check from you. A blank check that says, you love me, right? You care about me. I'm the center of your world, so... And then there's that blank check of love, that blank check of of uh, attention, affection, and whatever else they might need. Okay, so who's some examples of this kind of two, the sexual two? Um, again, I think Gloria from Modern Family. I mentioned that with the first, the self-preservation, but I could definitely see her here as well. I could definitely see her. I, I don't know that I know that show or that character well enough, but I would investigate that. If you guys know that show, put in the comments. Which one do you think she is? Okay, um, I think... Um, I think Ginger on Gilligan's Island, I don't know that she is a two. I don't know that her character is a two. She could be a three. She could be a four. She could be a two. But I think, I'm not sure about that. But I think in those moments when Gilligan is trying, when Ginger is trying to persuade Gilligan or the professor or Mr. Howell or the skipper, whenever she's trying to persuade one of these uh, unsuspecting males to her will, you will see her move in and like run her fingers through their hair. And you know, the, you know, the first type does the little old me kind of like Marianne might, right? Ginger does more like a big, strong fellow like you surely wouldn't be interested in hurting a little person like me. I think it's more Ginger is more of this in those moments where she's trying to like move a, a, a man toward her way of thinking, she will use the tactics that I'm reading here of the sexual two. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. That's what, that's the image I get in my mind. Okay. That's the image I get in my mind is that kind of moving in and trying to steer somebody through the years of, through the use of seduction and charm. That's exactly what this definition sounds like. Okay. I'm just telling you what comes to my mind. I think that that video of Madonna, which I don't think she's either, I don't think, think she's a two, but I think that video of the material world, the material girl song where she's walking down the steps and all these guys are fawning over her and she's basically just taking the money and the jewelry and then pushing them aside. I think that that's kind of a picture of an unhealthy, uh, another unhealthy picture of, of a sexual two. 
um, that image comes to my mind. The Femme Fatale, which I know nothing about that, but okay. Uh, Marie Barone could very well be this kind of a two in Everybody Loves Raymond. I think that what I read here and what I study and what I learn and then my love for that show and watching that character, I could see where Deborah is more this kind of two, the social, and Marie is a little bit more like, why am I not the center of your world? Why am I not, you know, after all I've done for you and all, aren't you just, and, and Marie will orchestrate people and move people, you know, in the ways she wants to try to get the outcomes that she wants. And notice it's aggressive, right? Aggressive and seductive and will consume you. And Raymond, I think, feels that way. You know, he's always caught in that relationship between his mom and his, and his wife. Somebody in, in comments before mentioned that maybe the wife on that 70s show or the daughter on there, I don't know. I'm not familiar with that show. I, I, I know what it is, but I've never watched it. But the wife on that, you guys might check that out. Um, the image I get, the last one I'll mention is the image, well, Dolly Parton too is another one. I think Dolly Parton is this, this kind of too. Um, I could see that, you know, and then I think the, the last image that comes to my mind is Puss in Boots from the Shrek series. I think that that Puss in Boots character is very much this character. And I don't know if Antonio Banderas is a two. I don't know. I'd have to really think about that because, you know, he's an action movie star. And so we tend to think of him as, but that whole Casanova, Latin lover, Puss in Boots. I think Puss in Boots is a good picture of this kind of two. And I think when he does the big eyes, he's moving over to like that self-preservation too, right? And that self-preservation too, he like moves over into those big eyes so that, oh, look at the cuteness. Oh, don't you feel sorry for him? Oh, put the swords down, guys. And then what? He turns back into the aggressive two. It's an act, right? Because he really is this kind of a two, I think. Wow, lots of information. Oh my goodness. I hope that you watched this video and were encouraged by it. I hope that it's helpful to you. If you stuck with it this long, um, I'm excited that we're learning and growing together and uh, can't wait to start working on the third video now uh, on, on type three. In the comments below, there's information for um, getting in touch with me if you need to. Uh, feel free and uh, man, just be present to life. And all of you twos, thank you. We're sorry we take you for granted. Um, much love to you all, okay? And remember, the, this is information that I extract from my research and then try to process through my own mind, as warped as it is. And uh, I hope that it's helpful and encouraging to you. And if you don't identify with all of it, great. Okay, that's good. Um, take in, in, in from it what's beneficial to you. And uh, I just hope it helps you understand a little bit more about you know, the, the place in life you are and how to move forward and to progress to, to even more and more levels of health. Thank you guys. And as always, be present to life. I'll see you next time.